It's so cute. Oh, I love it. I love these little um, Asian things, man. Just, just this attention to detail. Have you seen white people dessert? Yes, I have. It's just big. ice cream. Ice cream is good though. Yeah, I right. love ice cream. This has multicolors, different things in there. This is too professional, man. Got a clapboard. Probably this is what you wanted. No, it's just a podcast. We just, yeah, it, it became too big. Oh. I, I, started, I, I was asking Renault, uh, listeners, by the way, welcome back to Haya Podcast. You have the dessert king here with us today, Renault Ponomo, right? Did I get that right? Yes, that's right. Close Thanks enough, close enough, you know. In, Indonesian? Yes, yeah. Indonesian Chinese. Okay. That's right. Yes, Reno, we re- I reviewed him. Uncle Roger reviewed him making egg fried rice. But not that's bad. not that's not your uh, that's not your forte, is it? No, it's not. It's not. But you know what? I, lo- I love making food like that. Okay. You usually make pastries, right? Uh, desserts my forte, I would say. Yeah. Okay, but, desserts. Uh, like you know, when you venture out of doing these other things or other side of I guess food, uh-huh. people are like, "Oh, well, stick in your lane." I was like, "Why would I? Why yeah. should I?" You know, this is the stuff I like to make and eat. Uh, like, say, for example, when we were filming MasterChef, uh-huh. we were put up in an apartment, and I just make shit that I actually can't even do in the competition. Singapore chili crab, made ramen as well. Why can't, why can't you do those in the competition? It takes hours. Uh, it takes hours. Why can, why, MasterChef will let you make food that takes hours, right? Just no, prepare the stock beforehand. It really depends on the challenge. And they sometimes, most of it's like uh, maximum, I don't know, 90 minutes or an Oof. hour. It's, it's tough. And it, the time is actually quite, it's real. Really? Yeah, yeah. But uh, surprisingly. Then you're just missing out on the whole world of food. You can't make pho, you can't make ramen. Oh, well, yeah, that's true, that's true. But yeah, you can only again, make like white people shit. Wouldn't you know? be much of a competition as well though. Why, why, why oh yeah, we'll just yeah, crush, yeah. we'll just smoke the competition. Just, just wait, <laughs> wait for your first suit, if it won't, for 12 hours, just sit there like. Yeah. <laughs> the number of times Zero the camera pressure. has to come over. Yeah. Zero pressure, slicing your beef. <laughs> well, um, we wanted to film this, so I just t- t- I was DMing Renault online. I was like, okay, do you have a crew? He said, yeah, we got a crew. And then I didn't know it was going to be this professional. Usually, you should have seen my setup at home. It's just uh, me in my room, ranting it's, to my producer. Yeah. It's a pretty good camera, though. <laughs> camera? No? No, I just use a Canon M50. It's a oh, shitty 400-pound camera. That's what I have. Okay, all right. Because uh, I travel so much, I bring the camera with me. I can't bring a nice one. Yeah. Because, yeah. you know, the luggage people at the airport, they don't give a shit, No, man. just, just chuck yeah. everything. Yeah, I, I put the sticker fragile on it. I think that inspires them to be more <laughs> rough, to be rougher with the bag. They're fragile, huh? <laughs> yep, yep. <laughs> so I just break cameras. I break cables all the time. So I just bring the cheapest shit. How's traveling for you now? Traveling? Nah, necessary evil. It's, it's a bit different now, isn't it? What do you mean? Oh, COVID? We are, like, I, just, I just came from Bali uh, about two weeks ago. Oh, Bali, oh the Australian God. travel place. It was you know? uh, what, probably the worst. If worst you can't trip. afford to travel, there's always Bali if you're Australian. That's you know? right. Yeah, just take advantage always, of a third world country. Always take the, uh, the Asian airlines That's to go to Asia. Why? Why uh, do you I would say the service is better. Yes, uh, but they also missing. They also miss planes sometimes, though. You know. Yeah. The planes go missing, but the uh, service is oh, better. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like. What's the trade-off here? You know, uh, that was one that's like, hmm. Should I take that one? I'm not sure. Okay, I'll stick to the Australian Airlines. But then, flight got cancelled. Lost my luggage. I saw the, those yeah, Insta stories. Uh, yeah, that was pretty. That was, that's the feeding. Then it was like you know, so many certificates to go through. Uh, you got the COVID vaccine, blah blah blah. blah international DPD. I'm not sure what that is. I'm like, it's over, guys. COVID is over. No, now, it's the, su- now it's the super flu. I mean, I'm still getting over it. So if it's been 14 days for me and I've still got all these symptoms flaring up. Oh, shit. Yeah. Okay, I you, hope you, you give might. me COVID because you get the antibodies, right? So if I get it now, that means I'm cool for the next six months. Oh. Yeah, then I can, don't even have to take a test. You just, just show them your COVID recovery certificate. I kind of want to get it, you know? I, I, have you had it? Yeah, but in January. So oh, my antibodies about to run out now. Yeah, okay. okay so okay, I need yeah. someone, how, how do you get COVID in Sydney? What, what, who do I lick? Just go to, uh, go to the closest and as any, just go karaoke hopping. Yeah, give me the trashiest club in Sydney. Let me party with some bogans. You know? <laughs> no. <laughs> <laughs> I party with some anti-vaxxers. Yeah. Uh, but uh, well, I, saw, I saw you posting on your Insta story about yeah. how like, which, whatever airline you flew, that's missing your luggage. And it's always, um, it's cool to see you use Instagram story to voice out your frustration oh, like that. Like, I'm, I'm a know? very patient guy. Uh-huh. You know, it's like, okay, this is fine. My flight got canceled. It's all right. So I'm getting home at like 2 a.m. I'm only going to Bali for a couple of days. Maybe not even a day. Is it for a holiday? Just for a holiday. Okay. Uh, quick, quick visit. You know, it's the only, it's the only time frame that I have uh, to get out of work. Mm. And I can't, you know, a little quick getaway, come back. 
Uh, so I was pretty patient, and then I bought this really nice whiskey. I forgot that I had it in my hand carry. Oh, it was. I had only like two, three hours sleep. It was the last <sighs> bottle, thirty years old, and I went through security. I was like, I was like, back check. I was like, oh shit, that's mine. Oh, that was, oh fuck. <laughs> <laughs> so that's just down the drain. It's it's double the price outside of it, and I was like, oh, oh goddamn. Where did you leave that whiskey? In in the in the plane itself? Or? No, no. So it was in my hand carry. And you know, you okay. can't international. You can't carry more than a hundred mil. Oh. Yeah. So flight got cancelled. Forgot. I got home at two a.m. Uh, trying to sort out my accommodation. Everything didn't get enough sleep. Yeah, it is what it is though. Yeah, that's that's what happens when you travel to it Bali, was, man. It was like a little tipping point for me. I was like, okay, I gotta I gotta vent my frustration. I think this is bullshit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. As if I mean, I, whatever it floats your boat, man. It's also my fault. People subscribe to you to look at cooking stuff. So yep. when you post that kind of shit, you just go, yeah, okay. <laughs> yeah, another one ranting about his privilege. Give, give, uh, give me some sympathy here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you need a private Instagram for that. Uh, you need a Finsta. You yeah, know what that is? What is that? A Finsta, a fake Instagram. All the young kids have okay. like a second yeah, Instagram. Yeah. Because uh, don't ask me how I know this. I go out with too many 20 year olds. Uh, <laughs> they have their main Instagram. Uh, so their parents know, okay, this is their Instagram. But then they have parents a fake Instagram. Hmm? Parents or girlfriend? I think no, no. The girls will have it so because their parents check in on them. So they have a fake Instagram for their parents. Oh, okay. It's just like right. nice, innocent photos. But then they have their, their real Instagram that their friends follow. It's private it, and they yeah. never have their name on it. But so their parents don't find out. Now I feel like with this Finsta, there's, uh, there's the other side, the male versions. The male it's, version. It's there to, uh, to lurk. Oh, <laughs> I, I have always, to say, yes. <laughs> yes, yeah, yeah, she's know it. But I, I, I know exactly what you mean. I don't need one because I have my main oh, one and then I don't. have my, my higher podcast one. I just use my podcast one to lurk after, you know, sometimes okay. you, you go on a bad date and then the woman blocks you and then you're like, I wonder if she's posting about me. So I just lock on to my podcast <laughs> Instagram. Very and salty. I, ha, never thought about this, huh? You know, never Still thought about my this. my eyes on you. Yeah. No, I, I have done that before, but you know, everybody does that, right? Come on. I would say on. everyone's at least got that side of them, you know? Yeah. It's like, oh, your ex blocks you, it's like, oh shit. If someone blocks I you, what do you do? Yeah, not look at a profile? No, you have to just kind of see what's it's the grieving moment. Yes. Have you been blocked a lot on, on Instagram? <laughs> <laughs> I think I have. C. I'm pretty sure I have. You're, you're in a serious relationship now, right? Uh, I wouldn't, okay, look. Uh, just getting serious? I'd getting say. serious? Yeah, getting serious. What does getting serious mean? So you stop fucking other people recently? Oh. Or, <laughs> I mean, all these opinions are mine. So Renault's innocent. Uh, okay. that's, everyone thinks I'm very innocent, but like- uh, You have that baby face look. I think you so know? too. MasterChef loves like young looking contestants. It's a little bit, that's a little bit of a the vibe The fan base there. is also very family orientated, you know? Really? Where as a person, I can be a bit of a degen, you go out party, <laughs> whatever it is. I like, you know, when you go out, you get recognized in the streets, you have to uh. be on your best behavior all the time. You have to smile. Always yeah. be happy and everything, but otherwise you yeah. get papped and then you appear in the news. Oh, I wouldn't say, but I'm not that big if you get papped. Yeah. It's more like, oh, wow, you're not that kind of person I thought you were. I was like, well, I'm not that sweet of a guy all the yeah. time, you know? I'm, I'm human. I'm, I'm not just baking well. cupcakes every day, yeah. you know? And I'm sure a lot of housewives love you, right? Surprisingly, from what I've been told, yeah, I guess so. Yeah. I mean, have- it is household show. So you have to pick of the housewives, and when you say it's getting serious, <laughs> have you like, uh, Rejected all the housewives now for for your girlfriend. Look, she's uh, I'll I, I say this when I when I get serious is when I cook for the family. Oh, so you did that recently? Yeah, yeah. I made uh, chicken rice. Chicken rice. So Hainanese chicken Malaysian rice. Family. Oh, she's Malaysian. Yes. Okay. Yeah. How how did it go? Surprise. Uh, you know what? Um, I'm glad that it was okay. Mm-hmm. Uh, the the mom said that this uh, it's better than some of the restaurants she's been. To, so. I think she's, uh, I, you know, trying to be nice, you know. She's pretty scary though. Oh, Asian yeah. moms are always like that, man. Always. Tiger moms, right? She's a tiger mom. Oh, how, is your mom a tiger mom? No, my mom's pretty chill. I, I, we grew up, um, that's why they're not successful because they're not tiger <laughs> They're not very successful themselves. They get by. But you get belted. Yes. Oh, okay. Oh, you everyone. don't have to be a tiger mom to yeah, hit your okay. kids. You know, that's you true, true. chill, casual mom, but still hit your kids a bit. It's just something we do. And by the way, listeners, if you hear some background noise, you're recording this. We should have mentioned this on uh, in the beginning, but we are filming this at Reynolds restaurant, Koi. Yes, welcome, sorry. You know, it, it looks really nice. I like the decor. I th- you went with this, I don't know, industrial. Acoustics. Yeah, it, it looks like you're in a 
recording studio. Room. Yeah. Why? Why? You know? uh, my designers uh, picked that. I'm not sure, to be honest. Okay. It looks good. It looks nice. good. Yeah, yeah. If you're yeah. on the audio only people, we're trying to describe things to you because we're going to be eating some pastries and some cakes later. And some natural wood. Yeah, it's very grey and cold, you know. Not not my first choice of interior decor <laughs> style. But, you know, you, you do what you gotta do. When you have that Master Chef fame, you get away with anything, don't you? Mm. You know? <laughs> <laughs> It's pretty nice. It's pretty nice. Come check it out. It's Koi and then next door, it's what? Hungry Monkey? Mon uh, monkey's Mon Corner. Monkey's Corner. So it's like integrated into one big, I guess, family business. We started out, uh, it's actually the old store we had is across the park from where we are now. Uh, why, was, why did you close the old one? Uh, well, okay. Well, uh, Let's talk about it. The, the honest truth. Yes. Uh, As people want the vulnerability, you know. We needed something new okay. uh, to refresh. I guess as a business, yeah, you want to keep growing. Um, you want to keep changing. You don't want to be the same, same. Especially yeah. like trying to, just being stuck as a failing business. We want to grow to be more than that. Oh, it's a failing business? Hey. What with your, what is it? You say failing or no, family? No, 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 it's just like, you don't want to go in, you know when you go to places and it's just like, oh, this is a family business. Oh yeah, yeah. Right? You still got little bits of uh, personal belongings or you know, mom's decorations yeah. in the corner. Like an Asian child doing his homework. <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah, the kids come in, run around <laughs> the restaurant. Yeah. We want to grow. So we're looking to expand to, to, uh, to Melbourne and Shit. hopefully overseas. Overseas. So, yeah, it's something a bit more serious. We, we, we actually really started from nothing. Um, yeah, parents came here very poor, like a lot of you know, typical immigration story. Yeah, my parents w weren't that poor. We well, stayed in Malaysia. Nice. Yeah, yeah. They, they, they weren't like, maybe like lower middle class. Yeah, okay. We okay. got by, it was nice. But it w they weren't poor enough to want to move. Oh, you know? okay, moving okay, okay. is a poor person thing, isn't it? You it's can, a, it's okay. a very risky thing too. It is. You can either be like expat moving, then that's like you're you're you're, you're done. You know, you're, you're, yeah. you make a lot of money, just travel abroad for like two years, work yeah, abroad. Yeah. Uh, we didn't have those, but we weren't poor enough to want to immigrate either. Uh, to be honest, like, you know, it's what my dad's idea. I was thinking about it now. It's like, holy shit, you got to have big balls to, to tra you know, convert from rupiah to dollars. Yeah. yeah. How, wh when did he move here? Uh, we moved here when we were back in 1999. Ooh, okay. And yeah, were you, you were born already, right? Yeah, right yeah. Then. I was okay, like, not that yet. I was like okay. four or five years old. <laughs> okay. Six, five, five. I can't remember. It's good, man. Now, now you have you, you grew up you grew up here in Australia. It's a good life. It's okay. It's not bad. It's a good um, it's a good it's life growing up Asian here. It's quiet. I mean, it's, oh, I, I would say now uh -huh. uh, Asians, in Australia, we are merging. I think globally as well. Merging ever since COVID, you know, we were just like um, I feel like now it feels cool to be Asian. Yeah. You know, when you're growing up in a in a Western country, mm -hmm. especially I, I grew up in a school that's very white dominant. I can uh, tell you make pastries for a living now. <laughs> Have you seen the menu? Can I? Can, where's the menu? I put oh, it up gone. here. It's gone. Okay, bring oh, me I'll the bring menu back, back people. I need to, back okay, we'll show you how white this restaurant is. But carry on. <laughs> but with a lot of Asian uh, influence. Yeah, just because you put one Asian like furikake <laughs> in a white dish doesn't make it Asian, you know. But okay, I, I see your point. I've got, I've got to cater to the to the mass audience. <laughs> You yeah, know, as growing up, you know, uh, mm -hmm. as a minority, etc., as, as everyone would, I'm sure you would have as well. I grew up in a majority. I grew up in Malaysia. Oh, you grew up yeah. in Malaysia. Okay, so very Did mentally you study well abroad, adjusted. Though? I went for university. Yeah, I went. I went to America for university. That was the first time I lived abroad for an extended period of time, and that yeah. was I, when I was 20. Oh, okay. So okay. my mental, my my sense of identity was already solid and stable. Right, I was still, I was still finding myself, you know. Uh, <laughs> do you say the cheesy uh, Asian abroad shit? Oh, I'm not it's, white it's enough very, to be white. It's very not cliche. Asian enough to be Asian. I know. It's very cliche. Some people love that shit, man. Yeah. Some people think, oh no, uh, that's such a, that's so true. That's so true. I feel that all the time. But I feel like now it's like it's almost a copy paste with a lot of those stories. It's a fridge magnet. Yeah. It's the Asian live, laugh, love, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> that's true. I've talked told this story before, but um. Um, I, 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 did a I did a therapy session recently and then uh, I was talking about overworking, right? Yep. And then the, the therapist is like, I, I told her, you know, social media moves really fast. So I always feel like I have to keep working so people don't forget who I am. And then the therapist was like, do you think people will forget who you are if you forget who you are? <laughs> right? It's cringe. Yeah, it's yeah, so yeah. cringe. And then she just sat back in the chair like she was Beyonce. It's like, you know. 
This is my wisdom to you. Yeah, not Beyonce, but Oprah. Yeah, just sat back and that's a therapist like mic drop move, you know, sitting back in a chair. Just what was your response? So good. I just I tried so hard not to laugh. <laughs> I was just okay. Well, okay. Well, you can see you can say it like that. I guess I was trying so hard to be nice, you know, because I'm a compassionate guy. I don't want to mercilessly skewer my therapist. So, so you, you're saying you're you're working a lot. So is that are you are you workaholic as well? I don't know. I think I've worked enough. I also grew up in Asia. So if you compare me to the average British person, sure, I work a lot. But, you know, right. I think I, I work okay. It's a lifestyle now. I work all the time. But, yeah, uh, okay. You're always on 24-7. I mean, you're your own boss in a way. Yeah. I have, yeah, you, we are our own bosses, right? Because the more, if you work a nine to five, no, no matter how much you work, you get paid a set amount. So there's no motivation to work more. Yeah. For us, the more we work, the more money we make. So there's a lot of That's motivation true. to work for, right? But I still book myself holidays. You know, I would spend this flexible. It's so nice to have that flexibility. I can go to like, say I'm going to Mykonos for a week. So I, I usually book my holidays Monday to Friday or Monday to Saturday because I, I love just going to a city and seeing it slowly wake up over the course of the week. You know, it's very wanky, I know. And then I, but when I'm there, I try to just work two, three hours before lunch. Yeah. And then I have the rest of the yeah. day off. Even if it's holidays, you're still basically working, even just a little bit. Yeah. An hour or two, even A little bit of hour. editing. People need me. I need to run my business. You know, but do you, when you hire people here, do you have to, as someone who hires people myself, it's so frustrating, man. I wish, I wish everybody had that Asian work ethic. Oh yeah. You have that here? Yeah, yeah, Do you only hire Asian people? Is that illegal? Can you only hire Asian people? Oh, look, we've, we've tried to, (laughs) we've tried to hire a mix. It's, it's, you know, it's very interesting. It really depends on the business. Uh Um, It really depends who you are as a team and what you portray yourself in, in, I guess, this industry. Uh, and that's who you'll attract. Uh, we seem to attract a lot of Asians. Um, and so, of course, we'll hire them if they work hard, they're competent, um, as I guess many industries are like that. Mm-hmm. So, yeah, but I mean, if we can hire other Western, you know, other races, et cetera, why not? Why? No, why, not, why, not? why not? Why? Why hire other races? You uh, know, keep the restaurant pure, racially keep, pure. Keep the, uh, the diversity there. And also attracts the uh, other Western customers too. <laughs> no, listen. You want to extract Western customers? Just hire hot young Asian women. They will come. Uh, you know? <laughs> the Bali crew, the people, the Thailand bar, crew. I, I gotta earn like a, a little bar or something like that, or a club. Yes, attract the young Where ones. It's just only young Asian women, the, and the old white guys will come. You'll get an old white guy, <laughs> middle-aged white guy clientele with the highest bend. Yes, <laughs> they have money. They have money. They're lonely. They have money, and they have a weird Asian fetish. Use that to grow your business. Maybe that's why your first business didn't like, you know, take <laughs> off. You didn't have enough of the y- yellow next, this fever. Is, this is a, an idea for the next venture then. Yes, so, yes. Yeah. Koi is a perfect name for it, you know? <laughs> you say, oh, where do I find it? Imagine like a, like a, like a, like a kind of one of those like dirty old uh, white Koi guys. Massage. Where can I find like the, some young, fresh Asian meat? Koi <laughs> sounds, sounds about right, you know? Uh, like Koi, Koi actually stands for uh, uh, Kids of Eco. It's my mom's my mom's name. Kids of Eco. Yeah, Eco, Eco, Eco. I K E. So I-K-E. that's my mom. Oh, that's yeah. very sweet. So the business works in like you know my brother's side, my side, my other brother's side. And then Monkey's Corner named after your dad. My <laughs> <laughs> my brother actually Arnold. Arnold. Yes, he he DM maybe DM sometimes yeah, yeah, too yeah, Arnold. Yeah. Who's the more successful one? Oh, I'd say him. I mean, we've all got ups and downs. Uh huh. He's taken over Indonesia. Oh yeah, yeah. And you're taking over Australia. Slowly. Okay. I should try uh, to I should try to interview him when I'm there. You yeah, know? you should. You see should. see if he talks any shit about you. Are you visiting? Uh yeah, I'm p- performing there in August. Oh nice. Ba- uh, Jakarta and Bali. He'll definitely take you out. So I might go go a few days earlier to Jakarta. I hear it's not worth visiting as a tourist spot, Jakarta. Jakarta, uh look, it really depends who you're with. Okay. If I'm with Arnold, he'll bring me to the good food spots. Good food, good you places know. to go. You won't be bored. Yes, that's for great. sure. Yeah, Arnold, hit me up. Hit me up, Arnold. Look after him. Yes, Arnold. Arnold has a when I follow her Instagram, his or is it you? When your Instagram profile has a picture of a monkey. That's Arnold. That's Arnold. Yeah, or a bear. And I half expected or him NFT to. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> is it an, is it an NF, NFT? Yeah. Oh Even like God. Okay, I don't want to hang out with you anymore, Arnold. He's gonna <laughs> bore me with <laughs> NFT shit. The crypto market's crashing, Arnold. Time to buy. No, 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 I'm very quiet on it now. That's the was, problem was, with hanging out with guys. Crypto quiet. always comes up. Oh, it's, it was like every conversation we had, even we were like hanging out with my friends because we were quite into the crypto. It's uh-huh. like whenever we're trying to hang out together, like 
we made a rule at the start. Let's not talk about crypto. Yes. Next minute, we just start talking about crypto. Okay, Chris, crypto. I mean, guy topics, man. I, I kind of want to get laid, you know? So I don't want to talk about crypto. It just alienates all the women. They just roll their eyes and start unless, getting bored. Unless you show, okay, this, here's my wallet. <laughs> <laughs> you attract the wrong women no, no, in no. that case, you know? Also, who's getting impressed by a big number in your bank account, you know? That's, yeah, that's it's the so, you attract, right? Well, do, do even even now, do they still get attracted no, no, by no. that? It's, I think women are attracted by how you spend your money. Like if you have like a, maybe depends, some people depends. like the Lambos, some people like the yachts. Depends who you are, you, you know, if, you're, if you're a bit oblivious and you're attracting the wrong women. And there was like, you know, the ones that don't like to pay or the ones that don't even try to offer. Yeah, the thing is though, I, I'm saying like if you show your phone, you pick oh, up your, your right. bank account and then you literally show them a number. Oh, no, that's, that's Nobody's impressed no, by that. No one never does that. That's the turn off. Yeah, that is a giant turn off. I know some people who would show them their YouTube creator studio, how many subscribers they have. Really? <laughs> yeah, I've heard stories. <laughs> have you done it? <laughs> no, it's so lame. It's so lame. I just showed them uh, my Instagram. Uh, account no no don't do that but in 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 i've heard things in uh when i was in la there are a few youtubers there right so they talk shit about other youtubers sometimes okay. and, I, and i hear like, there's certain youtubers they have no game with the opposite sex so i just show them this is, this is my channel That's pretty sad though. this is my channel girl yeah. okay so, so for example okay you you meet a girl at a bar uh-huh and they have completely no idea who you are so do you ask for the number or do you ask for instagram um it depends really I've done, I've done both before. I don't do that well in bars anyway. I think you need to be like six foot or above to even stand out from the crowd. Oh, the you know? pants, the pants. Well, you're in Australia. There's a lot of, uh, a lot of Asian crowds. Oh, shit. Yeah, yeah. Well, I, I wish I had the time to go. There's but like Asian bars and there's like Asian clubs. Mm -hmm. It's like, for example, the same venue in, in Sydney, same, same place, just different days. It's like this, this is for the Asian night. Oh, shit. And this is for the... <laughs> the and then else. white night. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> I, I, legit, legit. It's like Friday nights. Here's a, a club called Wow, and then this uh -huh. is just known as the Asian club. Okay, it's interesting. We have that too in in, in London. There's a oh. club called TSQ. I go there too much, and I need <laughs> to stop going because I every time I go with my friends, we're the oldest people there, and it's just about all Asian, all twenty year olds who go to UCL. And a couple of forty year old white guys. Yeah. Oh yeah. Always. <laughs> always. <laughs> At me, <laughs> so hey, I, I I enjoy the attention. Everybody everybody knows me, so I get free drinks, so it's good. But back to your question, if I went to a bar or approached someone, hmm, it depends if I needed an extra little boost oh, in the okay. rapport. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If the rapport is good and I can sense some interest in, just the number is fine. But if I think, oh, I could use a little boost of like you know, I could like swing my dick a little bit, then I, I should. Follow my Instagram. Follow my Instagram. A little, little flex. Yeah, blue tick. Check out the blue tick. That's the blue tick. Turn you on, woman. So you don't use the Finsta. The Finsta. I don't have a. I don't have a second profile though. Oh, okay. Yeah. Sorry. Sorry. I thought it was the higher podcast. Oh yeah, that's true. Oh, just caught him out <laughs> on his lie. <laughs> oops. Oops. I need. I need a private one. A secret one. Yeah. Just one for friends. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Just for friends and uh, to hide my dark secrets. Do you do you like mix work and personal with your Instagram? Yeah. All the time. I only have one, so I po I will Same. post like my meals, and I'll post. Yeah, a new video just came out. You know. Yeah. And, and like, oh, here's me drinking out with my friends, and you post like, here's a sponsor ad. Yeah, <laughs> here's me with two strippers, <laughs> and this video is sponsored by BetterHelp. <laughs> Who needs therapy when you have strippers? They achieve the same purpose, to be honest. What's that? You know, make you feel better emotionally. Right? <laughs> yeah, strippers. You've been are there strip clubs? How do stri how do strip clubs work here? Do you throw them dollar bills? I'll be honest with you. I've actually never been to one. Never been to one. It's never. a good time, you know. What do you I mean? I usually go when I was in a, touring America. I would go with like um, female friends. It, it's less creepy if you go with another female, another woman, instead of just like a, ten guys. Yeah, <laughs> you just sit there yeah. because you, I always hear the the American strip club strip club experience. Like you, you put dollar bills, you throw dollar bills at the woman. It's kind of fun, man. At oh. first you feel like it's a bit disrespectful, but then you get into it, you get a bit drunk, you see everybody doing it, you and then you have a stack out. of dollar bills. I don't know any strip clubs here. I'm new to Sydney. We'll, we'll just you know? Can ourselves. we turn coin into a strip club? You install a pole here. I think the decor is almost the there. The after hours. You know, there's little holes in the ceiling. You can just fix something. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, it's, it's really fun, man. Just throw dollar bills and then what, they, what they shake the their ass at you. Been? Uh, to a strip club in when I was touring America, went to a strip club in Philadelphia. So recently, yeah, yeah, oh, a few months ago. Because in the UK, I think strip clubs there—I don't know—they just feel a bit more 
seedy, I guess. Yeah. Over in the US, you, you see the movies, so you're like, oh, I wonder, I wonder if, if strip clubs here are really like that. You know, just throwing, and you see people rolling in with like stacks of cash and just. Just the one dollar bills? Yeah. You know, just making it rain. And then it's, it's really cool. It's yeah. very expensive here. You can't, you can't do the exact same. It's like five dollar bills. Oh, God, you can't do that. You can't, can you throw coins at them? <laughs> <laughs> Uh, and then you have your YouTube channel, right? Yeah, it's, uh, but it's, to be honest, very up and down. Very up and down. I don't commit. Why? It's like... Uh, it's good. You need, you need that, man. It's, it's a... I don't know how you balance it. Like, for example, I've been... Ever since we opened uh, the new venture, mm-hmm. this one here, uh, I've been stuck at work. Uh. It's, yeah, staffing is an issue. I've got I've to fill in. I've got to you know, work 10 times harder than everyone else. Uh, as an owner and business owner, uh, mm-hmm. as a chef, you got to operate as well. At least for the first few couple of months, get the business up and running. Yeah. Uh, when did this open? A month and a half ago. Oh, shit. Yeah. That's very new. Yeah. Okay. And before that, I didn't work for like a year and a half. It was during COVID. Uh, oh, so, yeah. I, so I started doing YouTube um, and then work picked up. I, I see. I got a bit more distracted. And I was like, oh, I can't do this. Can't commit to that. All right. Priority, priority. I think that's fair. I think that's fair. When my tour started going, my YouTube scheduling uh, became a lot looser. Now yeah. I make like two, one of my main channel, two videos a month because I'm traveling so much and flying so much. What made you do, I guess, you know, like uh, YouTube as well? Um, I started YouTube in 2019 as a way to sell tickets to my stand-up okay. shows because yeah. I'm like, I was based in the UK and I see the scene in the UK. I see the people who make it through the traditional me- media industry, uh, the TV, the, the radio. I'm like, I'm, I have, my vibe is so different from theirs. I'll never make it. You know, as in like, and it's not like racism or anything. It's just different countries have a different sense of humor, right? Yeah. And mine just doesn't fit in the British uh, mainstream sense of humor, the British panel show, talk show style. Mm. So I said, like, okay, I better figure my own shit out. Otherwise, I'll just be forever be like a struggling comic. So I just started making YouTube videos. And then when the pandemic hit, uh, I, had, I had 10 months of savings, 10 months of runway to be like, okay, let me figure something out. Otherwise, 10 months down the line, I have to go back to a day job. And that yeah. is... I can do that because I was, uh, I used to be married, but I, I'm not anymore. And I was, when the pandemic hit, I was single, very single. My, the ex-wife left. We're still friends. It's all, it's all good. I'm not sure this is real or not. This is real. It's all real. What? Yeah. How, why would I, why wait, would I wait, make wait, up wait. a story? How old were you when you got married? Very young. 25. Shit. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Too young. Too young. Don't, don't do it. But we're still friends. It's just uh, we grew apart and then I was so focused on my career yeah. that I had no time for her. Uh, so when the pandemic hit, I was, uh, if I were still with her, I'll be like, okay, let's try to move to a bigger place. I'll get another job so we can both pay for the rent together. So Uncle Roger wouldn't have happened if I was still happily in a related. Uncle Roger wouldn't have happened if I was happy. Let's yeah. put it that way. You know? It would be Uncle Roger and Auntie X. Uh, Auntie Helen. Yeah. Auntie Helen. The, the ex-wife. So. No, it would, I think she, she kind of knew that she needed to leave me for me to blossom. You know? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, when the pandemic hit, I got Grew 10 apart. months. Yeah, grew apart. Yeah. Uh, I got 10 months and I just doubled down the content, did like two episodes of the podcast a week and then made a YouTube video every week. And then Uncle Roger hit hard and then it just blew up. Yeah. And then it just made my career. And I know the first video blew up. And if uh, the first video that blew up, that's luck, right? But then two years down the line now, people still watch my videos, people come to the show. So that's like hard work and like persistence. Yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. It's all the foundation. It's not just like a, a one hit wonder kind of thing, right? Yeah. yeah. It's an ongoing career now. Yes, which is very nice. I am yeah. enjoying it Im- immensely. I mean, that's the same thing with like, you know, very similar. Like, you know, I've got, I went up to MasterChef, not for the, you know, for the TV, whatever it is. It's for it's the, the like women, a- the pussy. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, sorry. I wish. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> it's more of like, uh, I just want to cook food. This is the only thing I'm good at. Mm-hmm. So I, I was pretty shit at school academically. Uh, I just couldn't focus. I tried my best. I dropped out maybe twice, tried to do it again, dropped out. Uh-huh. Just didn't work out. So yeah, I just focused on food. Family is in it, but I didn't learn from them. Went home from school or uni, whatever it is. Uh, family is always working. Chef hours are quite long. Mm. Uh, Your family are all chefs? Uh, yeah, yeah. Cool, cool. So it's, it's not an easy industry. Um, but then after I was getting into chef, my ex-girlfriend at the time, she pushed me to go into it. It wasn't my idea. Mm-hmm. And um, it just blew up from there. But I didn't want it to just be me to be known from MasterChef. I needed a foundation, you know, a career building kind of, yes. a long-term foundation. And that's, that's where Koi blossomed. Uh, yeah, for now it's Koi. Koi doesn't work out. There's always OnlyFans, Renault. There's always OnlyFans. 
I've been told to the OnlyFans. <laughs> Very good friends of mine. Oh, really? <laughs> <laughs> You'll do well there, man. You got a nice little twink, you know? A good plump butt. Good plump. Oh, I didn't even notice that. You, you, nah, you said nah, yourself. I'm All right. <laughs> <laughs> You're quite fit yourself. I'm okay. How do, you, how do you balance work work and life? How do I balance work and life? I don't. That's the problem. <laughs> well, you're quite fit. I see, I've seen your Instagram. Oh, yeah. Well, <laughs> I, I, um, I think it, I, maybe I don't eat a lot. I, I do eat a lot, though. That's the problem. It's like the other, the other nicknames are like Daddy Roger. Yeah, Daddy, <laughs> Daddy Roger. <laughs> I, I post shirtless pictures like two, three times a year to plug the podcast. It's yeah, a marketing yeah, yeah. tool. Like People, when you're feeling down, it's just like, I'll just upload this, get a few couple of... No, I don't. I don't care about that. I don't care about that. So it's, it's a marketing tool, and people roll their eyes. Oh, here we go again. And I'm like, well, it works. Sex sells, and I'm in the business of selling. You know, maybe you should post. Maybe you should work out a little bit if you want to have a career in here. You know, instead of bitching about me. Um, but yeah, oh, thank you very much. I I think I just I just work out when I can. I think when I'm on the road, I try to do like twice a week. Any yep. any hotel, I try to book a hotel that has a gym. Yeah. But hotel gyms are oh, they're not varying the qualities. Best. Some of them aren't even the gyms. Some of them is just one hotel room that they put a treadmill in, right? Yeah, yeah <laughs> it's just that. Or like one little cable machine that tries to do everything. Yeah, I, I just want a pull-up bar. Just give me a pull-up bar. Yeah. But they never have it because they, they worry people injure themselves or something. Oh, that's you know? quite true. You can never deadlift in a hotel. They never no, have yeah. a barbell or a squat rack. It's just that at least it's in like max 10 kilos. Oh yeah, the tiny little little dumbbells. <laughs> oh, it's, it's the worst. But I try to just stay fit when I'm in back in, in London. I just try to go as much as I can. Nice, man. You know? it's, it's, I find it so hard to, well, at least for me, I'm always physically working, uh-huh. to find time to even wake up early. You get up, you're so tired, and then I was like, oh, I should, uh, I should go to the gym, but I, just, I, just, I need more sleep. See, I don't have to wake up early. That's the, the difference in my I career. I used to be like, oh, 11 a.m. for me used to be just too early for me. What? Yeah. All right, that's too much. And now for me, it's like, I've got to get up at least 8 a.m. Yeah. And even that for me is like, holy shit, that's pretty early. I think it's 7.30 for me, but o- also because uh, I'm my, this whole year I've been doing renovation on the house and oh, I, nice. I'm living in the same house. Yeah. So the builder has come at 7.45. No oh. matter how hungover, how fucked up, drunk and I am, they still come at 7.45, so I have to be up. Okay, hey guys, it's not yeah. drilling, so I can't really sleep, you know? So that's why I've in, I'm into this habit of like waking up early now. Yeah, it's your body clock yeah. now. Yeah. How'd you adjust with the, uh, with the body clock now in Australia? I'm just constantly tired, you know, and, and you I get constantly get have coffee. Yeah, yeah, my body doesn't know when it's morning. Well, I can tell when my body thinks it's morning by when, what time I take a shit, you know. <laughs> you do this too, right? You, when you travel abroad, oh, suddenly I mean, you, you start shitting at 9.30 p.m. You're like, oh, my body thinks it's morning. That's why, <laughs> right? Well, Nobody tells I mean, like, you this. Now it's just like, you know, working a lot, right? So uh-huh. it's like, uh, just, um, I actually just holding in my piss all my shit <laughs> until yes. end of work I'm like holy shit I just like I didn't even drink all day and this is my first time going to the bathroom all day Ooh. it's ridiculous but how yeah. many days a week do you work here I try to do as much as I can which is six days seven days sometimes Oof. I'm trying to do a bit less now because I've got staff yeah. uh, flowing nicely but when you first open up you've really got to be there you need to hire some people oh, man, Koi is hiring hard. guys it's hard to find people people don't want to work Good people in Australia, that's your stereotype, right? You guys are all just lazy people sitting okay. on the beach. Going back to like hiring people, how do you how do you find people management? Oh, I hate it. I hate it so much. <laughs> like, I don't know where the line is because I'm like, I just want to exploit people, but I don't want to be exploited. So it's constantly that tension. Yeah. Okay. You know? Do you okay. find that about yourself? I'm like, I know it's a bank holiday weekend, but can you still work? Oh, can you? Are- can I fly you out to Australia and just work with family? Oh, that, that's how you. Oh, yeah, that's how you exploit them. <laughs> don't. <laughs> Families don't take breaks. Families don't go on holidays. No, look, we look after each other. It's like if they're willing to commit. Yeah, I look over then him. You know, you look after them. <laughs> you gotta look after them. Loyal I need ones. to learn. I need to learn how to do that. But in in Britain, they get too much holiday, man. Five weeks holiday. Five weeks. Yeah. Nice. And I have to pay for their pension. And right now, I only work with like freelancers, so like uh, self-employed contractors. Mm, mm. And I've thought of. Um, the thing is, because I paid them so well, I offered them a full-time position, they, they turned it down. They're like, nah, I'm happy to just like low pressure. You tell me what to do, I do it. Because the full-time role, I expect them to have some like pro- proactiveness, like yeah. think of new content ideas, yeah. think of what trend I should hop on. See, when you put them full-time, they're constantly working, but they get paid what? Less? L- or, or, well, less if you average with- out like by the hours. Yeah, that's right. Less that's by right. the hour. Yeah. But still the number will be more. But this, 
I pay them too well, so that they're freelancing. They're like, yeah, it's easy. Yeah, I gotta work for you then. Yeah, and they don't they don't want to do that, and, <laughs> and they see how hard I work. They're like a bit scared. <laughs> But it's, it's Britain, so I just want to move. I'm moving to LA next year, so maybe it's a bit easier to exploit an American worker. I so think. You, you've grown up from Malaysia, yeah. you studied in the UK, US, US, study the US. US. You know, moved and to the UK because of the woman. I was with the, oh, the woman was German. We both were right. in America. We both couldn't get visas, so we were like, let's live together. It's easier for us in the UK because it was pre Brexit. Yeah. So we moved to the UK, and now I want to move back to the US again. I think. I bought a house in the UK, but I'm gonna just leave it there, leave it empty. My friends rent are like, you want? No, not oh, renting it out. Investments, not even. No, I did it up so nicely. I did, had a designer in oh. and did it so nice. Like, you know, the whole reason of making money is so no stranger sleeps in your bed, right? Well, that's if you want to sleep in it, or just use it to make money. I want to sleep in it. I'll, I'll leave it empty. It's my storage. Okay. It's storage oh, okay, for me. Okay, okay? okay. Right. that my house. Nostalgia as well. Because you, when you travel, have you moved countries before? Like I've, moved, moved. No, I haven't. Something people don't tell you. Your electrical shit. Your appliances don't work because I, I, the plugs don't fit. So you either have to okay, if you want to keep using the same kettle, you have to buy an adapter forever. Yeah. yeah. And you forever feel like a foreigner. Why don't you just buy a new, whole new set? Yeah, exactly. Then what? What happens to the old set? You have to throw it out. Uh, sell it on eBay. See, in I don't country. have the time to sell my like like KitchenAid stand mixer. Get a PA. Don't you have a PA? I don't have a PA. Oh, that's so it's just you. Yeah, you know why? I wonder why you work so much. I think the thing is, when you hire a PA, being a comedian, you need to be in touch with reality and what regular people go through, right? What annoys them? Yeah. So what annoys them is like things like going to the grocery store, the self checkout line, that kind of you know ob- observational stuff. I don't do those bits, but you you know that kind of that's an example. But when you have a PA. I think you start losing touch. You start, you not you stop knowing how much like milk costs and what's expensive and checking out at a ho- checking in at a hotel. Those little annoyances that bug everybody. I'm not really sure what a PA does. What do you mean like, well, you get them to run your errands for you? Yeah, take up pick oh, up my laundry. Okay, right, right, uh, right. If I'm traveling and I have packages coming to the house, then they can just go there and sign for the packages, book my flights, book my trains. Yeah. Uh, but for that, I have my tour company that does it, so that that's okay. Book hotels, they do that, so that's okay. So I don't know, I, I, I think, and then PA is another cost yeah, on top of your true. business. And then it's just like, for uh, convenience. Yeah, for convenience, but then it is convenient, but then that pressures you to, you have to keep working then to keep affording yeah. to have that PA. But for now, if I want to stop working, I can just, okay, fuck it. I don't have any ongoing costs apart from my accountants, that's it, you know? So, so what's your goal now then? What's my goal? Yeah, because I mean, like, yeah, YouTube's kind of blown up. You've done really well with your stand up. I can't wait to see the stand up. Oh, thank you. Coming so next week, right? Yeah, that's yes, right. Yes, yes. Renault's going to be there. You want to come on stage? Oh, uh, hell no. No? <laughs> How long have you been with your girlfriend now, by the way? Uh, since January. Since Jan- oh, too, too soon to get engaged. I'm going to ask you to go on stage <laughs> and get the ring up, you know? Yeah. Well, not going to happen. Oh, too soon, too <laughs> soon, too soon. You cook for the family already. That's true. Yeah. That's true. My goals now, uh, I just want to create funny things so i think i've done youtube i've done uh, i'm doing the stand-up tour right now i think hopefully next step will be a uh, tv show ideas netflix non-scripted special. netflix uh we are in discussion you know it's a bad time to approach them for a special because of the st- stock price stuff so they said to me um we're not gonna make an offer yet but film something and see if you, maybe they'll license it yeah okay yeah. Right. so nice. that that's Congrats. what i'm gonna do i'm gonna film something in uh, in america uh, my yeah. special then we'll see if I can uh, pitch it to them. But to be honest, because I have the audience already, there is no, there's, it's a win-win situation. If Netflix buys it, great, nice, good prestige. But if they don't, I put it on YouTube, you know, you get a Same. lot of views as yep. well. Yep. That's, that's still, fine too. Still delivering to the fans? Yeah, still delivering to the fans. And may, on YouTube, you get a bit more control. You can just clip up the clips, yeah. use them for your own social. So there's a lot of like benefits to that as well. Nice. Uh, so yeah, that's the next goal, like bigger scale stuff, moving to LA. I just want to see how high this career can go. Uh, because I'm, I'm, I have no ties. I'm a single guy. We'll see. We'll see how it goes. What about you, man? What's what's your goals? Oh, it's it's, it's a mix. Uh, TV show is definitely one thing that I'm working on with my manager. TV show. Uh, hopefully. Yeah, well, we'll what see. do you want to do in your TV show? It's Pitch not, it to me. Pitch it to me. Definitely not one of the ones like, "Hi, welcome to my kitchen," and this is you start cooking whatever bullshit you're making. Yeah. Oh, it's, the, it's too uh, it, not Paris Hilton. No, it's not <laughs> a Paris Hilton cooking show. You watch that uh, daytime TV in Australia. It's just the same old for the past twenty or so. Oh, years. it's the worst. It takes half an hour to make a dish. I'm like, don't, who has time? And then they're chatting. And you can see it's not. Oh yeah, just it's 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 not great. Yeah, you feel like mm, 
Yeah. It's amazing. It's so fake. No, it's too fake. It's and so I, fake. I, the floor is shiny. You know what I love is like watching Ugly Delicious on, on Netflix, uh, right? Ah, that's real. It's, it's very real. Mm-hmm. You know, there's no filter. You're talking about real shit with real people. And even like, there's like some comedians there too, just talking about like their, their love for food. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And I'm actually, you know, what really surprised me is like when I first watch your stuff and you're reviewing and um, not just fried rice, I was like, God damn. This guy knows his food. Oh, thanks. Well, right. I have researchers who help me. Oh, okay, yeah, right. Yeah. But are you foodie yourself? Yeah, of course. What Asian isn't? Right? There's a few. What? There's a few. Okay, well, I can't. From what I know. In my experience, Asians, most of us, I mean, compared to like Western, like white people, we love our food a lot more. There's a higher percentage. And few, there are a lot fewer Asian people with like, oh, I'm vegetarian. Oh, I don't like seafood. Oh, yeah. Oh. Yeah. Have you dated a white woman before? And my God, like either no. it's either dietary restrictions or mental health. That's always a problem with those people. It's uh, we get a lot. Though. Yeah, we get they- a lot. And our store was like uh, a FODMAP diet. I was like, the fuck is a, a FODMAP? A what for? It's called a FODMAP. So FODMAP. It's like, I was like, what the hell is this? So I googled it. It's like you can have garlic, but you can't have onions, and you can have broccoli, but you can you can not have broccolini. I was like, why? And I was like, oh, sorry, I can't I can't do this dietary. It's like, oh, but I thought you were a chef. I'm not a fucking nutritionist, man. Yeah, I'm I, a chef. I, I tried to study me, but like, <laughs> damn it. It was like, it's we get so a lot annoying. of those really ridiculous um, dietary requirements or they come in like, hey, I'm, I'm gluten-free, but I can have beer. Oh, just kill them. Just kill it's, them off. It's confusing, You man. have insurance, right? It's very confusing. You don't have to pay them out. The insurance pays out, <laughs> right? It's so annoying. As a chef, I can only imagine. Yeah, I mean, it's like, it's, it becomes a mix of like, uh, for example, a, di- a diabetic, right? That comes in and is like, oh, do you have anything that's for diabetes? No, it's, like, it's a cake shop. Where does that bar? It's like, sorry, we don't. They get pretty upset. Just, just like, eat oh. my cake and inject yourself with insulin afterwards. Yeah, you know, it's, tell it's them just, that. No, it's just like confusing. What's, what's really, you know, some people that have fake dietaries uh-huh. you know, and they're those that actually really have life-threatening ones. The ones that are actually celiac, the ones that actually have nut allergies, etc. But those, that's others people like, you know, they're optional. Uh, so weak. Why so selectively? Weak, you know. But uh, when you say the foot map, I still don't fully get it. Like, what, I, I don't why, get it either. What? What? what is, how do you spell foot map? Is it F- short for something? F O D M A P. It's a foot yeah, map. Foot map. map diet. So, so you I'm not sure garlic, but no onion. That's something ridiculous. like that. Something like that. It is, it is a hard one to follow. Can we do an Uncle Roger video here where I work as the <laughs> server and I just yell at people having <laughs> food allergies? You know, their diabetes. Yeah, I think that that'll be a cool video. Let's yep. think about it for my August trip because Sounds I haven't filmed one of those Uncle Roger. Have you seen the Uncle Roger working at a place yep. once? Yeah, yep. I haven't done those in a while. I think it's, I'm due to do another one. Listeners, let I me know, leave a comment. to have you, because what we do in this mm-hmm. side here, where mm-hmm. we're sitting, where there's customers and then I'm here with my chefs. Uh-huh. We play it up and we cook the food and we explain it to the customers. Uh, let me explain it. Let <laughs> yeah, me, yeah. And don't tell me what it is. <laughs> 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 Just eat, just eat. Ask so many questions for what? <laughs> just eat. Hi, <Hi-ya. laughs> That's gonna be great, dude. Dude, this is be so sick, man. Yeah, I, I'm thinking about it. Let's let's talk about it more. Sounds good. Sounds after good. after the pot, and do we have some uh, pastry, some cakes we can try? Yes, definitely. All right, what is this, Reno? The right. camera's catching this. All right, so we've got guava. Uh, inside you've got pistachio, matcha, okay, blood orange, and the other, the green one there is the mango yuzu. Okay, describe it for the listeners because sometimes they're audio only. All right, so, so we've got two cakes here. One mm-hmm. is a green glazed cake. Mm. So with a mango mousse and a yuzu curd and a crunchy almond sable. Oh. See, listeners, it's pretty white, right? It's pretty, just because you put yuzu in it. <laughs> <laughs> it's green. It's green mango plus, not green mango, sorry. It's glazed green and a mango mousse because in Indonesia, we get these beautiful big green mangoes. Mm. But inside it's like bright orange. So, okay, okay, I'm gonna try to eat it with this as close to the camera as possible. Go towards the center. Towards the center. Yeah. Okay. Oh, yum. It's Thank good. You. Wow. Yeah, we don't like it too sweet. Citrusy, yeah. Too sweet is always the, the killer for Western desserts. Asians don't like it because, like, yeah. A brownie is so sweet, man. That's too much. It's not too sweet. It can feel the citrusy taste coming through, the green mango. I don't know what green mangoes taste like. Just regular no, mango? So just regular mango, but we glazed it green because in Indonesia, we get these big uh, mangoes that are green skin. So but it's inspired by correct the green mangoes of Indonesia. And then this little chocolate thing. Mmm, it's good. 
Thank you. Are you going to see your little um, the logo there? Koi logo. Put a plug. <laughs> so you came up with this? Uh, my mom and I. Mm. So my mom, she, we have another kitchen uh, down in a place called Ride. Uh, so we make all our cakes there. And then we bring it here. And then this other one, this yellow one. What is this? So you got guava, you got almond. Inside you've got some matcha as well and blood matcha. orange. Blood orange. And then this little thing at the bottom, this cookie. It's, a, it's an almond sable. So like a little butter biscuit kind of thing. Sable. Never heard of it. I've only reviewed like savory di- Asian dishes oh. so far. Pho, fried rice, what else? Ramen. Uh, I need fried. to review one of your uh, uh, pastry, uh, your dessert dishes. Yeah, yeah. Uh, sure. You have one, right? But the, the video is like 30 minutes long and then I have to like pick where you actually cook, make the cake. Oh, I've seen I can that actually video. just plate one up for you and then give it a try. I've got, I, I try I'm making a new dish. Uh, it's got like an oak wood gelato. Wow. Okay. Well, I want to review it online. That's okay. what I'm saying, on YouTube. I know you have one where you make that, what's it called? The cloud something? Wait, no. Moss? Moss? I think so. The dish you were famous for. Oh, right. Yeah. Oh, uh, the stitch? No, I'm not sure. <laughs> Who cares? I'll, I'll do my <laughs> research. This just is, eat, this is the problem. I need to uh, do research before interviewing someone. Uh, okay, it's yellow, cr- crispy, and the inside is like, oh, oh. Mmm, this is good too. Yeah, I prefer that one. Yeah. But this is very good. Thanks, man. I'm gonna try the sapling. People come to, to just buy, th- buy these? Yes, uh, so we've got over 150 different cakes. Wow. So we rotate them. 150 cakes? How, can you even display that in your- No, so we rotate whatever stock we have, make specials, etc. Okay. Yeah. Can, how long do these keep if you, if you buy them and take them home? Uh, five days. Mm. But best within two to three. This is so good. How do you come up with these? You just decide I want matcha and some shit. Uh, with the cakes, I mean like, we always have the base. Either if it's a cookie base uh, or, or a cake. Mm-hmm. And you think of the mousse, think of the color, and then whatever insets you want to put in, texturally, etc. It's so cute. Oh, I love it. I love these little... Um, Asian things, man. Just, just attention to detail. Yeah. Have you seen white people dessert? Hey. Have you seen white people dessert? Yes, I have. The it's very just big. ice cream. Ice cream is good though. Yeah, I right. love ice cream. Just has multicolors, different things in there. I like, mean, what I don't like with the Western desserts, just like just the very big, big slices of like buttercream cakes. Mm-hmm. Do you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. It's too much. Yeah. Nobody needs very that. Very heavy. Very heavy. Or you go to some Italian restaurants, it's just basic shit like tiramisu. But. Oh. A good tiramisu, it's hard to beat. Yeah, but it's boring. <laughs> this, is, this is better. I would love to have this and a tiramisu, right? Do people come here and order a tiramisu? <laughs> we have. We you have, have a, a tiramisu. tiramisu. Yeah, but it's in a jar. In a, ooh, I've seen those. I had jar tiramisu before. Yeah. Mm. Very good. Thanks, man. Appreciate and it. And then, Koi only serves uh, cakes. Then, Monkey Corner. We serve hot food. Hot food. Noodles, um, rice balls, sharing plates. And then this in between stuff. This, what is this restaurant here? Oh, so this is, that's the bar. And mm-hmm. this here is the Monkey's Corner. And where we're sitting at mm-hmm. with the cold steel is uh, experiential, co experiential. Yeah. Very cool, man. This is good. Thanks. This is really good. Come check out Koi, guys. The, the cakes are good. Come in to uh, try food next time. When you got here. time. When you got time, yeah. Yeah, I, I never have time, man. Too busy. Watching. Australia, you, know, you guys are too far away from the rest of the world. Oh, you know what? Do you like fur? Yeah, I do. You, you, I, okay, because uh, if you have, if you have time, you gotta go to this place called uh, Fur An. Fur An in Bankstown. Some people think it's overrated, but I still think they are the best fur restaurant. They made it popular here. Okay. Yeah, if, if Australia has like a noodle national dish, that'd be it. Uh, it fur. It fur. Has to be fur. Okay. Okay. Nice. This is yeah. This is good. I'm gonna c- c- come here next time. So, are you open for lunch, dinner? What yeah. is this? So, lunch we do weekends, and mm-hmm. then dinner from Tuesday to Sunday. And how much is a cake like this? Uh, that one would be about eleven fifty. Oh, that's all right. That's cheaper than bubble tea. Is it? Is, how much is from bubble where? tea here? Oh, it actually ranges from like seven to eight dollars. 
Yes, but then you start adding all that shit. The pearls, the yeah, jelly. The toppings, yeah, the and then it, add, it becomes a pastry, a dessert, a cake price. You yeah. know, this is way better than bubble tea. Fuck bubble tea. It's over now. It's not trendy anymore. <laughs> Who still drinks the it? The next one is uh, purple rice yogurt. Purple rice yogurt. You tried that one yet? Oh, I think I might have. It's pretty good. Yeah, they, there's always a new shit happening in the bubble tea world. I can't keep up, man. Sometimes it's like, I remember there was brown sugar boba. That oh, was like that was the best. trendy a few years ago. And now that's not the trendy thing anymore. Now it's no, like, it's not. what, cheese and foam. Cheese foam, creme brulee. Yeah, and then panna cotta, like ma- machi yeah, machi yeah, yeah, has yeah, a yeah, panna cotta right. in a bottle. And I can't keep up. Why is the bubble tea developing so quickly? I don't know. It boomed like what? It boomed again, actually, what? Three years ago, four years ago. They must be your biggest competitor, right? Bubble tea? Yeah. Man, they make a lot of money. Because if, you, if I'm out to lunch and I want something sweet, I'm not gonna have both bubble tea and this. It's bubble between. tea, you can just walk around, you can carry it, so you can yeah. hold it. Yeah, how, how are you gonna compete against, against Machi Machi? This is uh, very, very celebrational. You need some liquid. You need to make bubble tea here. Can you bubble- make a bubble tea cake? Huh? Put some pearls inside we it. We've got You got it? Yes, we have. Oh, yeah. shit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Why, bring bubble it out. Let, let me try it. Oh, not here, not here. Not here? Not yet. Uh, you you gotta have to do rotate it. it. Yeah, you got, th- those are our competitors, man. <laughs> gotta, you gotta beat the competition. But this is way better than bubble tea, listeners. So come check it out. Don't be basic. Don't be a basic Asian person. I've got two more mm-hmm. cakes here if you want. If two you want. more. Why not? Why not? Are you are you sweet tooth? I I, I I like sweet stuff. I prefer savory stuff. And alcohol. And alcohol. Which, yeah. what, what, what's your poison? Cocktails, man. Just cocktails. I, I like Negronis. I like Manhattans for the classic cocktails. Whiskies. Whiskies? Yeah, all Asian people. All Asian men are into whiskies. Whiskies and cognac. Yeah, XO, XO. Yeah, <laughs> handy green teas. Yeah, we gotta we gotta find a vice. All Asian men like whiskeys, you know. Just collect all the all the cognac, all the all the whiskeys. Yeah, yeah. And they never drink it. They just put it in a shelf. Just a flex. Yeah, and it's like just drink it. You're supposed to enjoy it, you know. Like when we get whenever I order like a really nice bottle, uh-huh. uh, I like I start drinking it, or I get gifted a nice bottle. I start drinking it. And I was like, oh shit. Is I can't find it anymore. Yeah, my 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 friend gave with me a um, Yamazaki eighteen for Ooh, my nice. housewarming slash birthday, and then I had a lot of Asian friends there, right? And they're oh, super cheap, that really cheap, and they never bring anything. And they see that bottle open in twenty minutes, it was gone. <laughs> oh yeah, like fuck that. And they're cheap, but they have good taste. Yeah, that's the yeah. worst combination hey, bro, of friends. Let's try this one out, man. Yeah, let's <laughs> try. <laughs> Cheap, but having good taste, that's the worst combination of friend to have. Yep. Because they'll yep. never give you anything. But then the moment you have something good, they're like, that's right, that's right. Fucking dicks. <laughs> this friend of mine is so cheap, she dilutes his shampoo. Huh? He just puts water in his shampoo oh, okay, to make yeah, it okay, last okay. longer. That, that actually, I, okay, I wouldn't use it to last longer. Uh-huh. So you know, like there's pumps, they don't always get everything when you're just like, you're, you're running out. Uh-huh. I always use it for the last... Oh, uh, the last one, everything. fine. I'm like, shit, I've, I don't have it in me. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm in my shower. The last one, fine. But yeah. to just top it up to for another extra two longer, weeks. Yeah, no, uh, you can't do that, man. No, 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 no. no. Yeah, there's too much. Do you do, you do that here? Do you, you dilute your, <laughs> your koi hand wash? Extra, extra water <laughs> to this one. More cream to this. No, no, no. Asians, man. Someone, and, and it's not like they're struggling, too. They, have, they make a lot of money. No, that's, like, that's, how cheap they, that's how they keep the money. Don't keep the money. Like who's, <laughs> who are you giving Live it to? Live to spend. Live to spend. Yeah, you gotta enjoy, enjoy it. And then what? You 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 just save and scrape, and then you die, and your kid gets the money. Why? Mm. Why do you leave leave stuff to your kid? Don't do that. What do they work for? Exactly. <laughs> they're gonna be they're gonna be dicks. If you leave them a lot of money, they'll be cunts. Right? Would kids. you want kids in the future? Yeah, yeah. In the future, I can't think about it now. Little Roger. You little little Reynolds running around. Not yet. Maybe like another ten years. Another ten I'll years. How 10 old years. are you? Twenty eight. Twenty eight. Okay, I'm thirty one. Close ish. Close ish. I'm a little Close-ish. older. A little when wiser. You, when you hit your thirties, it's nice, man. Your thirties. There's no expectation for you to have fun anymore. What do you mean? In your twenties, people want you have to feel you have to you have to go out. You have oh, to do when stuff. Your thirties, like oh, you have to make sure you have all your shit together and everything. Oh yeah, that's a little bit. That's yeah. a little bit of that. In your thirties, no achievement is impressive anymore. You're like, oh, I bought a house. Yeah, you're thirty. You're supposed to. And this car is the right the right thing to do. <laughs> oh, you know? oh, I bought a car. Man. Yeah, you're in your thirties. Yeah, that, that's fine. But we still party. But then, it's uh, it's harder to recover these days. Well, my partying is very different now. We just wine at home. 
it's cocktail bars, and then we go home at 11. Oh, okay. <laughs> Your body can't keep up anymore. Yeah, if I walk into a place that has a dance floor, I walk back out. That's what I do. <laughs> too dangerous. Too yeah. dangerous. If the floors are sticky, no thanks. The Henny Green Teas. And I feel creepy if the, like this is, if the floors are sticky. You have like twenty year old girls there, and do I feel you, creepy talking to but them. But do you get creepy fans? Uh, sometimes, sometimes I get crazy fans. What, what, I used what? to just go out with people or from my Instagram DMs, uh, and really? then sometimes I'll be like, uh, I think she's either feisty, uh, she either has a lot of personality or she's crazy. Let's find out. And then they have usually these crazies. They have like you know cursive writing in their Instagram description. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's yeah, yeah. A sign of crazy, isn't it? Uh, <laughs> if there's cursive in someone's Insta profile, fucking run, okay? It's uh, so I had a lot of that. A lot of uh, crying after sex, you know. Them, not me. Uh -huh. I, I'm normal, you know, and I'm okay at it. I'm not the best at it. I'm not, I'm not the worst at it either. <laughs> So the crying so thing just is uncalled for. Too good. That will be the only <laughs> the only time. Maybe that's why. What too good? It's too good. And it's the only time. <laughs> no, 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 no. I, I never think that. Okay. So what's this? What's this? Uh, uh, two more desserts. So this one is chocolate delights, a bit more heavier, richer. And okay. This one is the berry cheesecake. This side you have a little blueberry gel. So for the audio only people, chocolate delight looks like a, a brown chocolate ball, a sphere, a dusting of gold. Yes. Oh, gold. People love putting gold on shit now. It makes the extra dollars. It makes what? Extra dollars. Oh, no, you can it just, charge it just more, didn't huh? look good as well. Though. It it looks good. It looks good. You need that. You need that presentation. Yeah, I mean, it, it feels like it's gonna be plain, boring, mm -hmm. on brown. Exactly, and and that presentation is important because, especially when it comes to Asian food, there's this whole reputation that oh, it needs to be cheap because people just make it in the traditional way. Sometimes they don't look the best. So when uh, I friend my friend Liz, who runs a Singaporean coffee shop in uh, in London, she keeps complaining about how like people come to the restaurant and say, oh, in, in Malaysia it's only this amount. Why is it so expensive here? Because, well, it costs money to make ingredients are different, are expensive here. Yeah. It's a local labor cost, a local overhead of the restaurant. You can't really compare, right? That's true. And right. I think presentation is important. I think a lot of, um, I know a lot of restaurants in, in London where they make great food. This Malaysian place, Laksa Mena, they make great food, but they are a bit hopeless when it comes to how to market themselves, the PR and the presentation. Well, that's so. how you know when it's really good. Yeah, but then people don't discover it. Yeah, why okay. people don't go eat there? Because it's not like a trendy experience. It's really, it's really amazing. Like, uh, well, I was talking talk to you about uh, this restaurant, Malay Chinese. So mm -hmm. they they were in um, right below an office in the middle of the CBD. It's just cash only, by the way. Oh, okay, of course. A lot of like lunch customers. That's all they do is just trade for lunch, just for the laksa. Super mm -hmm. famous for it. Really, really good. Okay, I'll check it out, man. Yeah. This second one, what is this? Berry cheesecake. So you've got a berry insert, uh, little. Yeah, almond biscuits again, and then Ooh. with a berry, sorry, not berry, uh, cheesecake mousse, and oh. a white chocolate glaze. Okay, listeners, uh, this looks like- um, Looks like the Joker, doesn't it? The Joker? No. No. Why does it look like the Joker? Red, white, green. Your imaginations, you have a very <laughs> active imagination. It looks like, um, what's the Italian dish called? The cheese, as you have as an appetizer? Burrata, it looks like burrata. Oh, okay. yeah, 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 yeah. It looks like burrata with like some nice greens and red sprinkles and a piece of chocolate with a just sliced flower. on top. With a flower. Can you eat the flower? Yeah. It's, right. uh, we grow it, we grow it. Let me start with the lighter one. You're probably so sick of all these desserts now, aren't you? I actually have not eaten our desserts. What? In like a year. How do you know it's good? Maybe it's shit, you know? Pastry is very consistent. Um, sugar always will taste like sugar. You've got cream. Cream will always be like cream. Blah blah blah. blah eggs. And it's it's more it's more like following a recipe, following a formula, right? Making these. Yeah. Things. Whereas like when you use savory, you know, mm -hmm. your salt okay. levels can change whenever you add different seasonings to it too. Your heat can change. Yeah, and the, the way you cook hay. it, the wok you know? hay. Are you gonna get a, a, a gas stove soon? Uh, <laughs> I, I still use induction. What? <laughs> nah, in the kitchen we use uh, we use gas, of course. That's what you say. We're gonna check later. <laughs> see if he's, he's being honest. Really good. Thanks, man. Thank mm. you. Thank you. And then Asian savory cooking is a lot of feeling, right? A lot of feeling. Yeah. It's like whenever I get asked by my chefs, uh, so what are the measurements? Like, I don't know. Just use feeling. This you have this, 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 this. Just mm -hmm. balance it out. Just taste it. Just taste it. Yeah. It tastes good. And it works. You know, that's how they how they learn. Mm -hmm. um, if you follow a set recipe yeah, every single time. Uh, ingredients always change seasonally. Unless you sous vide something, you know, uh, then okay. that's more of a formula. It's, uh, but you lose the touch of the like, real cooking. Yeah. 
Very good. I like it. Now we try the, the, the chocolate ball. One. How do you even? Just break it. Yeah, if you set, set the plate yeah, down. Yeah, I need to set it and down. just crack it down the middle. Yeah, there you go. Ooh. Ooh, it's a big piece. Mmm, mmm, heavy. Yeah, it's nice. So you gotta have, you know, a bit of range for everything. Just There's a, a berry thing in it. Really good, man. How long do these take to make? These? A mm -hmm. couple of hours. Mm. So we rotate, we always have to do big batches, big mixes and everything. Set them out, fr freeze it. And I assume this, these desserts, you serve them in the restaurant too? Yeah, like uh, just the cafe promotion. side. Just the cafe side. But the restaurant does desserts, right? Funky um, Corner? Plated desserts. Plated desserts? They're like raw restaurants. Ugh. <laughs> just send it over. Why you? That's a, okay. Give oh. Arnold a word. Give Arnold a word. <laughs> so who has a better restaurant, Arnold or you? Oh, it's all one. It's <laughs> one old big family affair. Really? There's uh, no competitive spirit. I still cook better. Hey. For sure. <laughs> it's like I'm putting stuff on the menu because he's not here. And it's like, what is this? <laughs> At this, it's like, nah. <laughs> can we have what a, are you doing? Can we host, like, can Uncle Roger host a Master Chef and it's just you versus your brother? Oh, the <laughs> crossover. Is there anyone else in your family that cooks? My brother. Uh, you and your brother, and then any, anyone? Do you have any other siblings? My older brother. So the oldest. So Ronald actually jumped into the family business uh, mm. way before I did. Because my mom used to supply ca uh, for the cafes, uh, a lot of handmade chocolates, well, not chocolates, sorry, cakes mm -hmm. and uh, macarons. So my macarons. brother jumped into it first. He was, a, he was working at a digital firm yeah. um, doing you know, an agency. And then mom needed help, a lot, of, a lot of work. And so he jumped in and just learned off the, didn't have any you know, cooking background or any pastry in, in, in that fact. That's great. Macarons, man. They're like such a crowd pleaser, aren't they? Oh, I don't know. The trend has died. Really? Yeah. Oh. It's coming back up again, I think. I, I, I enjoy them. And, uh, it's too sweet for me. Too sweet? It's yeah, a little... It's, it's, like, it's like an almond meringue. Yeah, it's great. Yeah. And if you ever want like Asian tourists taking photos of your restaurant, just have some macarons on there. <laughs> they just get attracted by the colourful shit. Yeah, okay. Put, take a selfie next to it. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Thank you very much, Renault. This has oh, been good. wonderful. Thanks Thank you for me. the food. Uh, where can people find you? Koi? Koi Dessert Bar. Where is it? Sydney? It's in Sydney, Chippendale. 6 Central Park Avenue in Chippendale. And follow him on Instagram at Renault Po... Let's just say it. Renault P-O-E-R. Yeah. Poor. Renault Poor. And we'll find your brother soon. When I go to uh, Indonesia, I'll go find him. You know, it's going to be great. We'll take you yeah. out. Yeah, thanks, man. You're, it's been fun. <laughs> All good. Bye. Thanks,